Welcome to the Fresno City College Psychology Department's video tutorial focusing on the difference between independent and dependent variables. This is one of a series of video tutorials on topics related to the experimental method of research. The experimental method, as with all methods of research, starts with identifying participants. If we cannot observe the entire population of interest, then we must identify a sample of participants. At this point, you should be asking questions like, is this a random sample? Or is this a convenience sample? And how representative is the sample? Along with other questions about the sample to think critically about the credibility of the research. Since we are talking about a true experiment, then there will be different groups. But which participants will be in each group? In order to avoid bias, researchers use a random method. It is important to note that while random sampling is not always possible, random assignment of participants to groups is an essential part of every true experiment. Each participant is randomly assigned to a group. This means that each individual in the sample has an equal chance of being placed in each of the groups. This is where independent variables and dependent variables come in. The independent variable is the variable that the researchers control and intentionally create different groups to find out how changes in this variable will affect the outcome of the experiment. Let's linger for a while on the independent variable before moving on to the dependent variable. In 2008, Tall, Akers, and Hodge conducted an experiment on the effect of paper color on exam performance. A moment ago, I stated that the independent variable is the variable that the researchers control and intentionally create different groups to find out how changes in this variable will affect the outcome of the experiment. Right now, we are going to focus just on the part about creating different groups. Tall, Akers, and Hodge wanted to know if paper color has a direct influence on students' exam performance. The best way to find out is to conduct an experiment. So they identified a sample of participants and then randomly assigned them to different groups. The different groups get different variations on the independent variable. The independent variable is paper color. They actually had more than four groups, but then the slide will get too cluttered up, so I chose only four. White, blue, yellow, and green. Okay, now we are ready for the dependent variable. The dependent variable is the outcome measure. It is the variable that researchers are predicting will be affected by their manipulation of the independent variable. The dependent variable is used to determine if there is in fact a difference between the groups because of the independent variable. In this experiment, the dependent variable is the student's test performance. Did the color of the paper cause a difference in the average test score of the groups? Let's review the basic definitions of independent and dependent variables more explicitly. The independent variable is the environmental event that the researchers intentionally alter. It is the proposed cause of behavior, the proposed cause of changes in the dependent variable. The dependent variable is the observed and measured behavior, the proposed effect of the altered independent variable. I will present it a bit differently in the next slide. Pause the video now if you need time to study these definitions before going on. I do think that it is very helpful to always keep in mind that the point of conducting a true experiment is to investigate the cause and effect relationship between variables. Researchers will make predictions or proposals about the cause and effect relationship between an environmental event and behavior. The proposed cause is the independent variable, and the proposed effect is the dependent variable. Researchers are predicting the behavioral effect is dependent on the event. In order to test that, they alter the environment of the different groups of participants and then measure the outcome. Most textbooks use the word manipulated rather than altered. You should be familiar with this language. I like the term altered because it can serve as a memory trick. Psychologists call these memory tricks mnemonics. Independent and altered both start with a vowel, 
and dependent and measured both start with a consonant. One of the most important things to remember that will help you correctly identify the independent variable versus the dependent variable is random assignment. The independent variable is an environmental event that can be altered by the researcher and therefore allows the researchers to use random assignment to place participants into the different variations of that event. In the example that I use, the environmental event was the color of the paper on which the students took their tests. Researchers controlled the color of the paper that the students were offered. The researchers cannot randomly assign students to a test score. They are predicting that t student test score will be dependent on the color of the paper. Specifically, they thought that colors other than white would produce lower scores. By the way, they did not find any difference between white paper and pastel colored paper. It is also helpful to know that independent variables are independent of the person. Remember that I characterize them as environmental events. Researchers must be able to randomly assign any participant to any one of the groups. This means that demographic variables cannot be true independent variables. For example, participants cannot be randomly assigned to a sex or gender. Participants can be divided by sex or gender, but they cannot be randomly assigned to a sex or gender. Nevertheless, researchers will often examine the data by sex and treat it as if it were an independent variable. This is a more advanced topic for another discussion. There is a different video on quasi-experimental methods and confounding variables, but don't worry about that now. It is the use of random assignment that allows researchers to draw cause and effect conclusions with confidence. Now it's time to practice what you've learned by answering some multiple choice questions. Hertz hypothesized that participants who smell an onion stimulus labeled pizza will rate the odor as more pleasant than if the identical stimulus is labeled body odor. In this experiment, what is the independent variable? Is it A, the demographics of the participants, B, the label of the odor stimulus, or C, the rating of the odor's pleasantness? Pause the video now to give yourself enough time to identify the correct answer. The independent variable is the label of the odor stimulus. The participants are randomly assigned to smell the stimulus labeled pizza or to smell the stimulus labeled body odor. Remember that both stimuli are the same. The researchers altered the label. Then they measured how pleasant the participants rated the smell. So the rating of the smell is the dependent variable. The demographics of the participants describe the sample, and they might be examined as if they were independent variables, but they are not the true independent variable in this experiment. Manella and associates hypothesized that infants whose mothers consume lots of carrot juice during pregnancy will show a stronger preference for carrots than infants whose mothers do not consume carrot juice during pregnancy. In this experiment, what is the dependent variable? Is it A, the demographics of the participants, B, type of juice consumed during pregnancy, or C, infant's food preference? Pause the video now to give yourself enough time to identify the correct answer. The dependent variable is the infant food preference. This one is interesting because the participants are actually the infants. Prior to birth, they are randomly assigned to either being exposed to carrot juice in their womb environment or not being exposed to carrot juice in their womb environment by their mother's diets. This research provides evidence that infants' food preferences are dependent on what their mothers consume during the pregnancy. Cohen and associates hypothesized that married women will show reduced activity in parts of the brain associated with pain when they hold their spouse's hand compared to when they do not hold hands. In this experiment, what is the independent variable? Is it A, brain activity associated with pain, B, demographics of the participants, 
or C, hand holding. Pause the video now to give yourself enough time to identify the correct answer. The independent variable is hand holding. The women were randomly assigned to either hold their spouse's hand or not hold their spouse's hand while in the brain scanner. Then the researchers compared activity levels in brain areas associated with pain. So the independent variable is the hand holding condition and the dependent variable is the measurement of brain activity. This concludes the Fresno City College Psychology Department's video tutorial focusing on the difference between independent and dependent variables. If you need more assistance to master this class content, please do not hesitate to ask your instructor for help.